What's up, y'all? What's up? Welcome back to another video again with your boy Abe Shaw. As you can see by the title of this video, um, it's going to be in regards to the market analysis I just sent out yesterday. Literally, literally one day later, right? And already one of the entries, one of the TPs already smashed. And you know what I thought about? I said, um, it was pretty cool how I gave you guys like a, um, a different perspective, right? So it's one thing to give you guys like, oh, the trade hit TP, this is what happened, da 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 but instead, I actually was like, let me be more realistic in like the other video. How I was like, okay, let's see if they started their count from $400 to $14. I mean, once they started their count from $400 from those trades from last week, okay, your account got to $1,400, right? So now we're going to act like this week we have $1,400 in our account, right? And then I'm going to do the same, like, example, of like, oh, if you would have had to pop this lot size on this trade, this is how much you could have capitalized off this move. We're gonna do the same thing in this video, right? And this is kind of like similar to um, basically like using like my trading plan. Actually, actually, I haven't. Even, that's crazy. I should have just used my trading plan based for the, just based like this video. It don't matter. But look, so one side note: if you didn't know, now you know. Uh, I do have trading plans on my um, website, like free trading plans that anybody can use just for like whatever they want to like be more strict when it comes to trading if you're trying to figure out an idea like how to be disciplined what your lot, lot size it should be for your account or what's the stop loss you should set for your account it's on the website so go check that out if you want to but enough of me rambling in the intro let's go ahead and hop into the video where we can actually break down the first entry the first trade that actually worked in our favor last night well not last night this morning during new york new york session right and how if your account was at 1400 how much you could have made off of this trade and vice versa to go on and go on and go on. All right, enough of me rambling. Let's go ahead and tap into the charts. See y'all there. All right, y'all. So as you can see, uh, these were the actual trades I gave you guys in the last video. I gave you guys the buy setup for wants to break this area. And then I gave you guys the retest entry. And then you don't see it on the chart right now because I got rid of it earlier. But um I gave you guys a sell setup. So when the sell setup comes, obviously you can't see it right now in this video. So if you missed the previous video, make sure you go back to that video and actually watch and see what was the sell areas that I said to look out for. That So that way you're not missing that entry as well. But for right now, we're just going to focus on what happened in the market today and how basically it went great. It went perfect. Now what I do wish I would have did, I wish I would have gave you a sell setup as well like while we're in the zone. But that's my fault. I'll probably do say that for next week video. But yeah, let me just go ahead and press play. And I'm going to go ahead and speed this up just a tad bit. Right? So as you can see, during London session, the market started pushing down. It started playing in the zone, trying to figure out what it wanted to do. Not really making up its mind, but as you can see, it starts to go down for that downtrend, right? <clears throat> Taking its time, doing its thing. We'd love to see it. We'd love to see it. So, here, I think this is like literally the London session. I was looking at this. I'm like, dang, I could have called an entry at 36.60. So, I told you guys we can enter at 36.60, but I said I wanted to retest this support level first before you enter that trade. And you're going to see here, this is this is when I believe the market basically did like a double bottom in the market. And for those that don't know, a double bottom is basically an indicator that the market is about to get ready to go for an uptrend or just basically like a, a retest spot, right? Um, let's see. Is this one happen? Is this what I'm thinking about? Maybe this is not what I'm thinking about. And I'm gonna show y'all what I'm talking about. I'm gonna pause. We're gonna pause. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna educate y'all. You feel me? So yeah. So it did. It did stay at 3660, and it took off. But yeah. So I'm gonna show y'all. So a double bottom, and I think I got this on under the resource uh section of my website as well. So yeah, this is what a double bottom look like. It's basically two touches, basically two candlestick patterns, two candlesticks coming back to retest the support level. And for those that don't know, support level is basically an indication in the market as that you know, like, okay, this is the, the furthest we wanted to go before we start going back up in the direction of the uptrend. So as you can see here, the market had already came down to like that 3660 area. For me, since my broker's KLT it actually hit 3660 area, uh, the first time it pulled back, okay, cool. Then it dropped and retested around that area again. And once it came back to that area again, I'm like, dang. Like, I could have just told him, like, all right, set a retest for that. But I didn't. And honestly, I'm not even mad at that. Like, who's, how was I supposed to know that the market was like, oh, no, nah, we're just going to make 3660 the area for the um, 
for the buy. Even though I told you guys this is a buy area, I'm not going to count this as, oh, yeah, you should enter off this. Because I told you guys to wait till the market actually push down to this support level. And once it confirms that that support level, then that's when you hop in the trade uh, once the market pushes back up and closes above. Right? So, as you can see, uh, this is, when is this? This is okay now. This is doing London session. So London session, like I was saying, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. candle. The market came back to the top of this zone. And we saw that the market did not um break out of this zone, but instead it rejected that price. So this is an indication when you see the market rejecting um when it's at a resistance level, you're seeing that the market is rejecting that price. That's letting you know like okay, bet it's still a bearish market. Um and if it's doing London session, maybe you might think like, you know what? Maybe that sale or maybe that buy more position, if it is going to break out of here won't come until new york session so instead of waiting for that buy or rushing hoping the setup comes tonight you would just rather wait until new york session to see if the buy position is actually valid or if it rejects this price again uh go away wow wow did it just mess it up i don't think it did but let me make sure i put this on work mode so nobody interests me all right so once this uh i lost my train of thought just i don't even know why i did that like my laptop is doesn't matter right so so once it retests it here again if it doesn't break above the zone this is another chance for you to enter for the sale once again i didn't say this in a breakdown but this is i'm giving you a basic like, analysis of what i would have done if i was trading during london session around this time what would we look for in the market to let me know like okay it's not breaking out right now hey but it's going for that sale so i could have took this sale so i'm gonna just continue to press play on that let the market do what it do <clears throat> and and this is crazy because it came all the way back down to the zone <sighs> beautiful drop man beautiful drop mm -mm -mm. retest that 3660 area again i was just playing with it this is when you start to see the iris cassada and it's chilling and i can't remember if i uh I may have sent out, like, we we call it like a quick 100 pips on that for my indices chat before we retest it again, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, all this still in the chilling in the zone. When it, every time it came back to the top of the zone, this is an indication I knew it, oh, it didn't break out. Okay, bet. Now this is an indication it did break out, but it didn't close above. So once it came back down, oh, it closed back inside, bet. I'm taking the sell back down. Right, and I've noticed that um, with these market conditions that the indices are moving in, it's been a lot of trades. Let me pause this. It's been a lot of trades where it will be a false breakout. So like it'll break out, and then you would think it's a retest, but then the next candle closes back under. If that counts, it closes back under, and kind of like what you see right here. And this is on a 15 minute time frame. If that counts, it closes back under. Take that trade, right? Don't get caught in like, oh, it's just a retest of the zone. It's going to continue to go in the uptrend. Like, I'm, like, I've been peeping this, like, like through, like, just back testing and seeing, like, every time it's, like, a weird retest pullback where you think it's just a retest of the zone. Like, if it continues to close back under a certain price that it just broke out of, like, a major zone level, it's most likely going to be going in that downtrend until it comes back to, like, a major support level or a major retest area around that 3660 area price or whatever that price end up being. Later on down the road, like it might not be 3660, but it could be like the same setup somewhere over here. So keep that in mind uh, when you're trading this, because I noticed that too. But we did catch, I think we entered around like in this area, caught that by. So here we have our retest, right? We have our retest. Where is it going? It's going, it's the arrow I told you. It's coming back to 3645. I really should just told you how to enter it right here. This really would have been a sniper entry, but this is something that you really got to be paying attention to and no one want to enter. So, shout out to my advanced traders that caught it at 36.45. If not, like I said, 36.60 was that real entry that we're looking for. And now that I have 1400 in my account, instead of me, so first of all, the account started with $400. So, the fact that we're already $1,000 in profit, I'm not really tripping on my positions. But the smart position I would take is I would do a 0.20 lot size on the next trade I'll take. So, that way, now on SPS, I'm only risking $200. But the reward... I told y'all we're taking from TP1 to TP4. That's 200 pips will be um, $400 off of that move, right? So the account should hopefully go to 1800 once the market actually pushes up to 3660, right? Once we get that break and close at 3660, we're in there. We get that close by the zone. It's playing support. Okay, I'm chilling. It whipped it, but it didn't close. It's chilling. 
So this trade isn't valid yet, right? This is around the time where I'm actually entering the market, right? And then what I'm seeing here, so starters, two things. 3660, I said TP1 is 3665. So TP1 had already smashed off the first entry, right? TP1 had already smashed. 3670 was TP2. So TP1 and TP2 was smashed. Hold on, 3675 was TP3. It didn't, I don't think it hit TP3. Let's see. Nope, it didn't wiki yet off this first one. So I'm going to keep going. 3665. So these are the four TPs, right? I'm about to pay attention. Pay attention when I'm showing you all. <clears throat> so, off this kind of stick, and I'm mad it kind of went too fast, but that's basically like how the market was. Let me see if I can drop down to the five minute if it would show you without it. Uh, so, I say this is the area that was interact. TP1 and TP2 is already smashed, right? Cool. That next candle set took us to TP3 and TP4. All four TPs was smashed. That's why it's very important to make sure you set your TPs so that way like, you're not worrying about, oh, I'm going to just close it manually because it could easily push up to that price and then pull back. And that's exactly what you see right here. This was the next candle stick that pulled it back and probably was a stop loss on there. If I'm not, let me see. The next candle stick probably uh, dropped. Yep, see, the next candle stick would have hit you out versus you was already in profit, your $400. So for me, like I just taught y'all, I'm setting my TPs. I popped the point twenty lot size. Uh, point twenty lot size. We caught another two hundred pips that quick, right? Four hundred dollar play. Uh, four hundred dollar play. I don't know why I just had a brand for right there. The account is currently sitting now at eighteen hundred. That four hundred dollar investment that you started with last week is now sitting at eighteen hundred dollars, and this is still only trade number one we still have this potential setup we still have the sell potential setup that you gotta look at the other video to uh see and then two not only that we're gonna uh i'm gonna speed it up now we're gonna take it to where the market is at currently the market is currently here right what do we have here i'm gonna get rid of my ma's i'm gonna get rid of everything so i can really see what did i just teach y'all we just learned about double bottoms when the market comes back to the price First time, okay, this is our first indication. It comes back the second time. That's the indication of a trend. And a double bottom is another. You can look another way to look at double bottoms is it makes like a W shape, right? So here, what do we have? We had the market retest in 36.45. It pulled back. We got that retest again, right? What is that? Two retests. One here. One major area here when it came, it was playing at that price. Second time, came it came back to that price again. <clears throat> so. As you guys know, if the my my rule of thumb, I tell people my selling shot all the time. If the market comes back to the area that I, the first alert I gave y'all, take the same setup, right? Like it retests as long as it closes above these uh the price of thirty six forty five, it's right here at the bottom of the zone. Cool. Take it thirty six sixty same four TPs. So respectfully, um, I'm probably not gonna do another update until the end of the week, right? But just say, we're going to say tentative, right? No, not even tentative. We're going to say pending, <laughs> right? Once the market comes back, if the market is, this is our first indication of double bottom. So we're expecting a bull run right now. If not, okay, cool. We're going to catch that sale if the market drops for some reason. But if we get that close, we take this bull run back from TP1, TP2, TP3, TP4, whatever we want to set it to. Let's say I want to set it to 3680, another 200 pit move. So once again... I just made $400 off that last one. Uh, you know what? We're going to do one more trade of a 0.20 before we up it to a 0.40. All right, so we're going to do 0.20. Actually, no, this whole week, last week was all 0.10s. This week, we're going to do all 0.20s. Next week, we're going to do all 0.30s and then so on and so on. I'm going to really show you how, how, how it really works, how that compounding, staying consistent with the proper lot size. This is what I did to pass the uh, the fund and account challenges. This is what you can do. This is going to help you become more disciplined with your trading. So once again, another 200 pip play. Once the market pushes back up, a potential another four hundred dollars on the four. We already made eighteen hundred, right? That's gonna put our account at what? Let me talk to Siri. Hey Siri, what is eighteen hundred plus fourteen? Whoa, she's not listening. Hey Siri, what is eighteen hundred plus four hundred? The answer is two thousand two hundred. Perfect. Thank you, Siri. Appreciate you. Twenty-two hundred dollars. If you're like, bro, you could have just added that up. Don't care. That's what I got Siri for. Right, you're worrying about the wrong stuff. I'm teaching you how to get money. Look, now 
off of two trades, your account is not at 2200 But I'm going to go ahead and hurry up and send this video out. Uh, hopefully, you guys understand that once the market is done, once it retests that same price, you could take that same trade again. This is what we call, this is another, I ain't even going to say, I ain't even going to say that. I'm not even going to say that because it's not. But this is how you capitalize the most off of the positions. If the market want to retest your area again, that you the first buy you caught or the sell you catch, Cool. And you know what? Thank you for reminding myself. Hey, I'm on a roll right now. This is what I'm going to do. So, once the market comes back up, now that I actually have you guys here, shout out to everybody that's watching day two. Day two of the video. So, if the market comes back to 36... Uh, we're going to bring this up, actually. Get rid of this. Bring this up now to here. If the market comes back to 37.10 and we see that it's still rejecting that area, I'm going to give you guys another setup. Right, I'm gonna give you guys another sales setup. It's gonna be at 3705. Remember, let the market retest that price. If it doesn't break out, take the sale at 3705. Your stop loss is gonna be 3715. Right, so the break and close. Your stop loss is gonna be 3705. I mean. Entry 3705, stop loss is going to be 3715. Your TP1 is going to be 3700. Your TP2 is going to be 3695. Your TP3 is going to be 3690. And your final TP at TP4 is going to be 3685. And I'm going to just go ahead and change these colors before it irritates me. And yes, we have too many lines going on on our chart right now, which is why I be telling y'all, like, just focus. You gotta stay with me. Y'all understand that we just, I just showed y'all this is the buy area that we taking. Okay, this is our sell area. And yes, this is technically, if you see that's going back to the zone, yes, you can be a swing trader and take it from here back to here. That's a 400 pips. But you don't have to worry about being greedy if you don't want to. You can just take this 200 pips, and then once the market actually pushes up and it closes back below, cool. Catch another 200 pips going down here. Or if it doesn't take the sale and it goes for the buy, cool. Take another 200 pips going up, All right? I'm going to end y'all with that. Just gave y'all another free setup. And I just showed y'all basically the results you can get once you learn how to like focus in on just being consistent with trading with the same lot size and basically being patient. Just letting the market come to you. Not rushing no setups. Literally, like just like I just told y'all earlier, like, oh, I could have called a trade at 3660. But for what? Just let the market be patient. Let the market actually come down to that support level that you were looking for. Then enter. Once it closes back above that support level, and you're green. That's the green line. So leave a like. Leave a comment if you haven't already. Appreciate everybody that's been watching and just staying to the end. Um, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Where it'll probably just be, it'll probably be on Friday. And it'll just be the update on all the trades as a whole versus just like the one video right now. Just the first market hitting. But... Sheesh, the week already looking great. We want to know on the YouTube channel. Shout out to the channel. Shout out. What should I, what should, should I come up with like a name for my subscribers? Wealthy Trader? Wealthy Trader Gang? Wealthy Trader Squad? I don't like gang. This is a Wealthy Trader Squad. Or let me know what y'all think. Comment down below what y'all think. Our, uh, the subscribe, the, yeah, yeah, the subscriber family should be. I don't know. Wealthy Trader Family. What the trader family or what the trader squad? I like family. We'll figure it out. All right, y'all. See y'all in the next video. Peace out.